Welcome into an emergency edition of the KSO Show. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you. The reason we have an emergency is because K-State has filled the final spot on their basketball roster. Get excited, folks. Uh, some people said it couldn't happen. Some of those people were me on the game like three weeks ago. But Jerome Tang has proved me wrong. He has uh, found a way to fill out the roster with somebody that has played Power 5 basketball before, has gotten scholarships to do so, and that man is Will McNair Jr. Uh, K-State bring in a player four years of experience at the college basketball level and somebody that's played significant minutes over the last three seasons of college basketball being over double digits uh, on average in each game. Will McNair, the background on him real quick, started his career at New Mexico State, played three seasons there, uh, and was a starter on their NCAA tournament team. He started 27 of their 34 games, played 23 minutes, averaged close to seven points and five boards, and then transferred to Mississippi State to continue on with Chris Jans as head coach at New Mexico State. Uh, only averaged 13 minutes a game, three points, and uh, hauled in three rebounds per game. But this is a good depth and rotation add, especially at this point in the process and for K-State to finish out the final scholarship on their roster. Yeah, I like the pickup uh, when you consider the circumstances. Obviously, it's the, someone's going to look at last year's production and maybe be a little underwhelmed. You see, well, he's around three or four points a game, three or four rebounds per game. But you're doing that at Mississippi State and in the regular rotation for for the last piece and somebody that you're you know adding in September. And with all things considered of what's available in the pool, I think you probably feel like you hit a home run um, in, in many ways. So I I. I can't knock what they're doing here. And obviously it probably gives you another element to your team and allows you to be continue to be more versatile because this is a guy that can probably do some things for you. If you're Kansas state that you didn't have last year in terms of kind of have a, having a big, that's a little bit more of a back to the basket conventional type. They can also bang a little bit against the more physical teams. Like we saw that sometimes Kansas state struggle with whether it was going against Lampkin while he was still at TCU or even mm -hmm. in the, Elite Eight game when they play Florida Atlantic, so um, it allows allows you to probably to have an answer of just about everything that you're going to face. Because if it's going to be an up and down game where you, you need some athleticism, then obviously you got guys like David Gasson, got guys like Jarrell Colbert. But if it's a more physical brand, you need someone to you know beat around with another big a little bit. Then then maybe you know Will McNair is going to be your answer. So I like the addition because it gives them a little bit more versatility and an element that they probably needed last year and didn't quite have. And, you know, for this point of the calendar, it still seems like best case scenario, right? It does to me anyway. I, I can't uh, really criticize what they're doing here and someone that probably has a bit of more of a ceiling than what they've shown in their career as well. Um, just didn't get a lot of opportunities, uh, a bunch of opportunities at Mississippi State, but he's backing up a pretty good player too there in Tolu Smith. So I, I like it. Um, we'll see what it means going forward and how quickly he can get up to speed. You're, we're talking about a guy that's getting to campus pretty late in terms of learning everything and how they want to do it at Kansas State. Um, what's the transition like? It was a little bit easier for Desi Sills because even though he arrived in October, that was a dude that was committed long before then. It was probably on videos and stuff like that and able to prepare um, and learn things at a, a more rapid rate because of it. Um, Will McNair will have that luxury. But this really makes Kansas State more complete, I think, probably more talented, 1 through 13 as well. When you're talking about last year, a team that made the Elite Eight, you had Dorian Finister at the bottom at the 13 that wasn't quite ready for meaningful playing time. And that's why they're hoping that maybe they can scrounge a red shirt out of that whole situation. We'll see if they can. He played a little bit. And Anthony Thomas, who didn't play at all and obviously is not with the program anymore. The, the, who you have now at 11, 12, 13 – is better than the 11, 12, and 13 from last year. So um, do you have a Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson? That remains to be seen. I think Arthur Kaluma is going to be pretty special. I, I think Naquan Tomlin can, can be pretty special. I think Tyler Perry can be pretty mm -hmm. special. Um, Marquise Noel was in a different stratosphere, so we'll see if they can match what Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson provided. Even if your one and two isn't as good as last year's one and two, I think Kansas State is so much better maybe – from three or, or four to 13. Yeah, I think that's the big thing about this team is that the, the depth is obviously so much clearly better than, uh, you know, bad grammar there on my part, but it's so much better and you can clearly see it 
um, with how this thing is starting to develop out. And that's McNair coming in. He adds an element that K-State did not have last year. You're absolutely right. They struggle with those teams that had big bangers inside. And I think it's good to have a dude that really can just go out and rebound. That's going to be the best thing that he brings to the table to you. Like when Will McNair is in the game for K-State, you're not expecting points out of him. And you, he will still give you those rebounds as showcased by the fact that he hauled in, you know, significant boards, his, his best season in New Mexico State. And this is a K-State team last year. They only had one player get more than six rebounds a game. It was Keontae Johnson. Naquan Tomlin was just shy at six. But after that, Marquise Noel was their third leading rebounder. Uh, he tied with David Gasson and Desi Sills. That's not That was not great for K-State. And it was a clear weakness. So this is a, a good ad, like you said, given the time of it all. And it, my concern was that they would have added a 13th player that we had never heard of the school that he had played at before. And it was just, hey, look at that. We got all scholarships filled. But I shouldn't have doubted them like I did. You know, I, I thought, honestly, that the addition that they had made with Quez Glover was was significant at the time. And I thought that was the best they were going to do. And I was content and, and thrilled with that. But now you get this ad and you just find another way to incrementally make your roster better. Um, it's not like a game-changing pickup for K-State. They already had those, like you mentioned, with Tyler Perry and Arthur Kaluma. But this is the type of deal that uh, it gives you more options later in the season or against different teams that you might have. Because, I mean, we saw the games last year. They would have to throw a guy like Bebe out there to kind of give a different change of pace. They needed somebody more of his style. And – Bebe was good in, in certain moments, and he you know, had a role in whatever. But Will McNair, probably a more physical guy and a guy that's more equipped to do some stuff like that. So I think this K-State roster is, has gotten to a point where in year two, which sometimes in a lot of these rebuilds or retoolings uh, can be a lot tougher than year one, I think Jerome Tang and his staff have done a really good job and put K-State in a, a position to be competitive this year in the Big 12 and once again, once they make it to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they, they just continue to buck trends and defeat odds. I mean, first year, overhaul an entire roster, still make the Elite Eight. Um, the first couple of weeks of the transfer portal being action, being live, and you miss on Max Ace, miss, and you miss on Aaron Estrada. And people are like, eh, can they duplicate this, the success that they had last year? And they grab Tyler Perry. They're like, okay, this guy, you know, pretty good shooter, pretty good, pretty good score, um, even in a pace that's, you know, snail's pace. Let's put it that way in North Texas. So what's he going to do in Kent State's offense? Okay, there's a lot of hope here. Then a little bit more of a lull again. They're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, are we running out of gas again? Nope. Surprise everyone, Lane Arthur Kaluma from Creighton, who can do a lot of different things. He was fantastic in the first game overseas where he was very active on the mm -hmm. offensive end of the floor, and he's going to be a defensive weapon that you can put next to Naquan Tomlin, maybe even Jarrell Colburn at times, and you have an incredible amount of length and, and basically are a defensive force with those three um, put together at the same time. Um, another, then you miss them more, and they're like, all right, are we, are we stuck at 11? No, you, you pull another rabbit out of your hat and get maybe, at least from a production standpoint, one of the better offensive guards in the transfer portal as well, and Quest Glover, just because it fell out between him and BYU. And then, oh, maybe we're stuck at 12. No, school started, doesn't matter. We're, we're adding Will McNair, the big man from Mississippi State, who also, similar to Quest Glover, mm -hmm. um, just to fall out with the school that he was originally – going to and that was uh providence i believe uh even one on the foreign trip so interesting the way that they play out um college basketball and college athletics wacky world um mm -hmm. good dudes or, or viable dudes are going to come available at all times of the year so you just never can shut your eyes or ears to it like even if you're a program you have 10 guys in july or august you can probably still feel feel a pretty good roster of 13. And that's something that Jerome Tang has has been adamant about and preached ever since he got here. And again, it just goes to show he knows what he's talking about and he knows what he's doing. And again, like this is not the the addition that makes all of that clear and is some game changing thing for K State, but it's a really good pickup for this stage of the process. And the one through thirteen on this roster is very strong, much stronger than last year. And we'll see where ultimately it ends up taking K State this season, but. Good pickup this late in the game, and uh, 
now the roster's filled out. And the only thing that we have to, to you know, kind of wait and see for K-State basketball is uh, when the non-conference schedule gets finalized. You know, we're, we're still waiting on that. But other than that, uh, we're ready for basketball season. I know football just started, but the we're going to get to like the end of September. And I'm going to be just dying for basketball. It's, it's how it goes every year. I'm on record as being a college basketball more than a college football guy even. Uh, so I will be ready for basketball the second it comes around. Uh, give me all the exhibition games that you can. Oh, exhibition. I, get, give me to Las Vegas for the opener against USC. Yeah, well, uh, it's good that K-State will show up with a full roster in Vegas because you might need it with a, a pretty talented USC squad. And that will do it for DY and I on this uh, quick update version of the KSO show. The Wildcats fill out the basketball roster. They get Will McNair on board as the 13th member of the roster and uh k-state ready to get things going in uh almost you know two months from now is when k-state will officially start their season against usc